Hey everyone, this is Amal Matu from University of Maryland School of Medicine, and I want to let everybody know about our next upcoming emergency medicine cardiology course. We've done probably about six to eight of these thus far, but in the COVID era, we've had to go virtual, and the past couple of courses we've done very successfully virtually, so we're going to continue on by having our next course virtual as well. It's going to be June 15th, and June 16th, these are going to be the times, East Coast time, and also we're going to make it convenient for those folks out on the West Coast. You're not going to have to get up at 5 in the morning the way you do at many other courses. We're going to get it started a little bit later in the morning so you have enough time to wake up and rub the cobwebs out of your eyes and get some coffee and then join us for what I'm certain is going to be another one of our really great 15-hour EKG and cardiology courses. Check out the website, emcardio.com, to get an idea about all the different topics we're going to cover. Probably about two-thirds to three-quarters of the course is going to be focused on electrocardiography, and we're going to cover it all. We're not going to focus on the basics. We're going to go with intermediate and advanced level stuff, but not esoterica. We're going to talk about the kind of deadly stuff that you need to know to save lives in the emergency department, but we're going to go way beyond what the board exam or the textbooks are going to teach you. We're going to talk about some stuff that is more at an advanced but very practical level. We're going to talk about some subtleties in cardiac ischemia, dysrhythmias. We're going to spend a lot of time on dysrhythmias with regards to wide complex tachycardias, treating them and also diagnosing them. We'll talk about some of the non-ST elevation indications for cath or lytics. Everyone always thinks that the only people that go for cath or get lytics are people with ST elevation. Not so. You've got to know about some of these other indications as well. We'll talk about ACS and then we're going to talk about a potpourri of non-EKG topics as well. We're going to try to get you up to date with what's been published recently in the emergency cardiology literature. Let me share with you some EKG cases. Test yourself on these EKG cases and ask yourself how comfortable you feel with these real emergency department cases. So first of all, here's a patient with a left bundle branch block pattern. Are you comfortable making the diagnosis of a STEMI equivalent every time you see a patient with left bundle and Scarbosa criteria or the revised Scarbosa criteria or the Barcelona criteria? We're going to get you comfortable with making that diagnosis. Take a look at this. Everybody, I'm sure, is looking at these biphasic Wellens-looking waves in the mid-precordial leads. I'll tell you what, this is not Wellens syndrome. This is actually a normal variant. This patient needs nothing more than a ride home. What's the drug of choice for this? Here's another Wellens-ish looking EKG. And actually, this is not even acute coronary syndrome. It is a mimic of acute coronary syndrome. We'll tell you what the drug of choice is for these patients. How about this one? This patient needs to go to the cath lab immediately, even though there's just ST segment depression. If you're picking up on the elevation in AVR, well, that's a good pickup. We're going to talk about all the different things that can cause ST elevation in lead AVR. There's probably about eight to 10 of them. Everyone only thinks about ACS, but there's a handful of other things things as well. Take a look at this 12 lead ECG. Do you know what it is on this 12 lead which predicts that this patient whose ECG was read as normal by the cardiologist and by the machine, this patient has something on the EKG that's predicting that he is about to have an inferior wall STEMI. Pick up STEMIs before they even happen. How about this? This is a young man who presented with some atypical chest pain. He's got some ST segment elevation in some of these leads. That's probably just early repolarization, right? Wrong. This turned out to be an acute STEMI. And we're going to talk about something called terminal QRS distortion with a whole bunch of examples. So you will know this concept. And it's very helpful in many cases when you're trying to distinguish between an anterior LAD STEMI versus benign early repolarization. How about this wide complex tachycardia? Do you know why amiodarone administration to this patient would kill this patient? Yeah, a lot of people love to give this patient amiodarone because it's wide and it's regular and the rate's about 110 or so, you know what? That is the wrong medication. That'll kill the patient. How about this one? This patient has an unstable bradycardia. This was a hypotensive patient and pacers don't work in this case. Atropine doesn't work. ACLS in general fails with this patient. How about this one? This for all the world looks like a Mobitz 2. You've got also a bifascicular block. This is a trifascicular block. And you know what? Pacing is not 
indicated for this condition. This patient doesn't need any pacing. In fact, this patient doesn't need any ACLS measures at all. We'll talk about that. Regular wide complex tachycardias are tough. When you're trying to tell the difference between SVT with aberrant conduction versus VTAC, we're going to talk about using the Lewis lead, a very simple technique which makes this EKG a piece of cake when it comes to making the distinction of whether this is SVT with the bundle versus ventricular tachycardia. And take a look at this. You know, your computer is trying to tell you to shock this patient. This patient doesn't need a shock. In fact, it's inappropriate to shock this patient. We'll talk about why that is. So these are just some sample cases that we're going to go through. We're going to go through an awful lot of stuff, and we're going to take you way beyond the basics. Don't settle for knowing what you learned in residency. Don't settle for knowing what you need to know for the board exam. That is not enough to save lives. We're going to take you way beyond that, way beyond the basics, beyond intermediate level also. But again, as I promised you, we're not going to talk about esoteric stuff. We're going to talk about stuff that you need to know that shows up in your emergency care practice, which will save lives. So again, check out the website, www.emcardio.com. If you have any questions, send me an email, and I hope to see you in June. Take care, everyone.